continue the topic of decimals, but we are going to look at adding decimals. So if in your big books you can write the heading Gwaith Dosbath adding decimals and today's date. Remember, if you need to press pause on the video in order for you to do that, then that is absolutely fine. So, adding and subtracting decimals. We apply exactly the same method as if we were adding and subtracting whole numbers, where we use our tower or our column method. However, this is really important. So when setting out tower sums for addition or subtraction of decimals, you must remember place value columns, which again applies to what we did with whole numbers. But the tenths, hundredths, thousandths column and, um, and the other columns must line up in a vertical line. The decimal points will also lie in a vertical line and kind of look like buttons on a snowman. So if you need to, sorry, if you can copy this in your big box, but if you need to press pause again now to copy this in, that is absolutely fine. Okay, so underneath your heading of adding decimals, if you can copy this note in to remind us of our method and remind us that we need to line up the numbers correctly in order to have the correct tower set. Okay, so moving on to some examples then. So, number one, 44.8 plus 52.3. So starting with our 44.8. Plus, okay, so tell them that we are adding. So 52 is going to go under our four tens and two units, 52.3. And then we draw our lines for our tower. Put the decimal point in the answer, vertically below the decimal point in the question. Always starting on the right side, so in our tenths column, we're starting with 8 out of 3 is 11. 1 down, carry that 1, 10 over. 4 out of 2 is 6, and the one we carried is 7. 4 out of 5 is 9. So our answer equals 97.1. Example 2. 567.9 plus 74.85. So 567.9 plus 74.85. Again, lining up them decimal points, so putting that decimal point straight in our answer. But remember in our place value here, so our tens line up, our units line up, and then our tens. So we've got a hundredth digit here. If we want to fill in the missing gap there, we can add a zero. So we have the same number of decimals, same number of digits after the decimal point. Zero add five is five. Nine add eight is seventeen. Seven down, carry one. 7 and 4 is 11, and the one we carried is 12, so 2 down, carry 1. 6 and 7 is 13, and the one we carried is 14, 4 down, carry 1. 5 and the one we carried is 6, so our answer is 642.75. Last example then, okay, if you can copy these, into your box exactly as they appear there. So staying in the big box, you can write a side head an example and copy example one and two. And then moving on to example three. So this time we've got three numbers, 234.44 plus 599 plus 11.375. So starting 
four. Row eight, you are adding a number, so 599, we can't see where the decimal point is there because it's a whole number. Remember, the decimal point will always come at the end of the number if it is a whole number. So lining up your 599 with your hundreds, tens and units and then we can put the decimal point after it. And then finally we're adding 11.375. So this time, when we put a decimal point now straight in the answer, if we want to put the same number of digits after the decimal point, we're going to need to add one zero to the first number and then three zeros to the second number. Starting in our thousandths column on the right, zero add zero add five is five, four add seven is eleven, one down, carry one. 4 add 3 is 7 and the one we carried is 8. 4 add 9 is 13 and the one is 14. 4 down carry 1. 3 add 9 is 12. Add 1 is 13 and the one we carried 14. 4 down carry 1. 2 add 5 is 7 and the one we carried is 8. So our answer is 844. Point eight one five, And again, if you could copy that example exactly as it appears on the board in your books. I'm now going to set you a task for you to have a go at some of these questions yourself.